Result seasons is getting into full swing, with Public Bank's first quarter profit up 5% to 1.23 billion ringgit compared to 1.17 billion ringgit a year ago. Now, despite economic headwinds, the bank saw its earnings grow on the back of higher net interest and Islamic banking income. Besides that, higher fee and commission income and lower bad allowance also gave it a handsome bottom line. Chairman Tan Sri Tae Hong Piao said the bank started on a positive momentum this year and the group has achieved resilient growth. The country's third largest banking group by assets recorded a 9.5% jump in gross loans to 277.7 billion ringgit. Even then, the bank said it's not letting loose just yet. It expects loan growth to moderate as consumer sentiment gets weaker and lending rules get tighter. Have you been taking long showers to beat the heat? Well, soon there might not be enough water to go around. DAP MP Charles Santiago said the Klang Valley may face a water crisis in 43 days. He said water reserves in Sungai Selangor and Semenye could drop below its critical level of 40%. In early March, both dams had a capacity of 96% and 93% respectively. Now, it's at 67% and 71%. With the El Nino phenomenon expected to stay to June, Charles urged the Selangor government to take proactive measures in preventing water shortages and assume that we're in an emergency situation. 1MDB has so far been investigated by many countries, including Singapore, the Swiss, Hong Kong, the UK and the US. 1MDB chief Arukanda said in a recent report, if being contacted or asked to help, the company will fully cooperate subject to any international protocol relating to such matters. However, the company has not been contacted thus far. When asked about 1MDB's financial obligations, he expects an interest payment to be made to its bondholders as it entered the five-day grace period. As for the risk of a bond default, he noted that 1MDB's current cash surplus stood at about 2.12 billion ringgit. That's 11 times more than the 192.5 million ringgit interest payable on April 18. Meanwhile, DAP MP Tony Pua wants the PAC to reopen its probe into the state-owned company after panel chairman Dato Hassan Arifin admitted that the report was edited. After being taken over by Heineken NV last October, Guinness Anchor Berhad has changed its name to Heineken Malaysia Berhad. As a result of being a part of Heineken's global supply chain, the company is expecting to see significant cost savings over the next 6-12 to 12 months. Managing Director Hans Asadi said, If the company can tap into the global procurement contracts that Heineken has, it'll be more efficient to purchase raw materials like barley, glass and aluminium compared to buying as a standalone brewer. However, he declined to reveal the quantum of savings the company is expecting. Coincidentally, the parent Heineken, which is the world's third biggest brewer, today reported its beer shipments has risen above analyst estimates, mainly driven by growth in Asia and the US. Property developer Crest Builder Holdings Berhad has joined forces with the Malaysian Rubber Board to change the skyline of Jalan Ampang. The project will be a mixed commercial development that will mix retail, commercial and residential, all sitting on MRB's land. All in all, the gross development value of the project amounts to 1.33 billion ringgit. MRB will be entitled to 22.5% of the GDV amount, which works out to be about 300 million ringgit that will be paid in cash, apartments and an office building. Crest Builder only just held its groundbreaking ceremony for Latitude 8, which will sit atop the Dangwangi LRT station. Latitude 8 has a GDV of 1.16 billion ringgit and will start contributing to the group by the end of next year.